Lenders Mortgage Insurance, or LMI. What is it, why is it important, and how can you avoid it? That's the questions that I got coming through from Jack on the Infinite Wealth YouTube channel. Now, note, if you haven't checked out our YouTube channel, get along and subscribe. Make sure you see all of our videos as they come out. So Jack wanted to know more about Lenders and Mortgage Insurance, and it's exactly what we're gonna be covering off in our Just Ask Tim video series today. Now, before we get into it, guys, let me introduce myself. My name is Tim Guest, I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the managing director of Infinite Wealth. Trained over 18,000 people how to reach their financial goals, whether it be things like home ownership, travel and lifestyle, or early retirement. We do it using only what people currently have available to them right now, and we do it with very high customer satisfaction ratings. Now, if this is your first time tuning in, welcome. And if you're one of our longtime followers, thanks for coming back, guys. We love the fact that you spend your time here, and we'd love to see all your interaction with these posts, so whether it be your like, your love, your angries, your comments, your questions, make sure you put them down below. And the only other thing that we ask is please share these videos through your social media platforms so that your friends and family can get the benefit of this valuable information as well. But let's get stuck into it. Lenders Mortgage Insurance, so what is it? Essentially, Lenders Mortgage Insurance is an insurance policy that the bank takes out against you as a risk, as a borrower, I mean, as a risk. Okay, it only covers the bank, however, you gotta pay the premium. Now this is one of the things that a lot of people often miss. A lot of people think that lenders mortgage insurance actually protects them. That's often referred to as mortgage protection insurance as in a very different kinds of uh, insurance. So lenders mortgage insurance essentially was invented to allow banks to provide lower deposit home loans to borrowers. So this is typically only provided if you're, if you're not putting in a deposit of 20% or more. So maybe it's a 15% deposit, 10% or 5% deposit. And in the case that you're getting into a home loan with a lower deposit like that, the bank will normally insist that lender's mortgage insurance is taken out. Now one of the, the things that you can do with it, you can either pay this fee up front, or what you can do is actually, most banks will allow you to add it onto the loan amount and then you pay it off during the loan term. Now what affects the cost of this lender's mortgage insurance? Well, a couple of things that affect the cost. Primarily what it is, is the loan amount and the amount of deposit that you're looking in. There might be some other factors that come into play as well, like it might be whether you're full-time or casual, or maybe whether you're an employee or whether you're self-employed. That might have a little bit of an impact on the lender's mortgage insurance as well, but primarily, loan amount and deposit. To give you a bit of an idea of what you might be looking at, if we looked at a $500,000 purchase, so I've utilized this, this two lenders mortgage insurance providers in Australia, QBE and Genworth. I've done this based on Genworth's calculator. So if you're putting in a 5% deposit for a home loan purchase of $500,000, the lenders mortgage insurance is gonna be about 16,000. If you double that deposit to 10%, pretty much the lender's mortgage insurance half. So it's actually about eight and a half thousand dollars and you go to 15% deposit, it will half again, or almost half again to four and a half thousand dollars. Now, how can you go about avoiding it? Well, the first thing you could do is this, is you could actually save a larger deposit. And I'm gonna come back and talk about that, get your 20% deposit and that way you probably don't have to worry too much about lender's mortgage insurance. The other thing you might be able to do, and it's what's becoming a um, certainly more popular option nowadays, is you might have a family member like mum or dad or something along those lines that might be able to go guarantor. Now one of the no biggest mistakes that people normally make when it comes to guarantor is they think that if you're a guarantor, you're guaranteeing the loan. That's not the case. Normally what you're only guaranteeing is actually the, the deposit. Normally what you guarantee is a 20% deposit by guaranteeing the 20% deposit. What it does is it avoids you from having to pay that lender's mortgage insurance and of course you can save that cost. Uh, the other way that you might be able to avoid it, so that we've got the proposed first home loan deposit scheme. Okay, so this is something that was proposed by the coalition government last election. It's, uh, it's scheduled to come into play January 1st in 2020. There's a few details still being finalized about it, but do keep in mind that you've got to be under the $125,000 income mark, and it's only available to 10,000, the first 10,000 borrowers every single year. Considering last year there was about 110,000 uh, first homeowners, it's only gonna be a very small percentage. So the question that often people are then left with is, what do I do? Do I continue saving, save a bigger deposit and save the cost of the lender's mortgage insurance? Or am I better off getting into the market now with a smaller deposit and copying that cost? So here's primarily how you'd wanna think about it. Now I'm gonna take the worst case scenario here. So let's take the $500,000 purchase. Let's take um, the $16,000 cost for the lender's mortgage insurance. So that works out to be about 3% of the purchase price of the property. So typically we're helping clients that are investors or looking to produce a return or growth out of investing in property. So if you're an investor looking to get into a growth area, chances are that area is gonna provide better than a 3% per annum growth. Hence, you'd actually be better off spending the money on the lender's mortgage insurance and getting into the market now with a lower deposit. 
If you are potentially looking at maybe owner occupied, you're not so much worried about the growth and there's not a market that's really growing or moving. A little, similar, a little bit similar to what's happening in a lot of markets right now around Australia. You may be better trying to save up that larger deposit and limit the lender's mortgage insurance. But keep in mind, you've got to keep an eye on the market because if the market starts to move, there's not going to be much growth that's required in that house to actually have it be better off that you got into the market sooner. So that's the best way to think about it if you're going to compare getting in now and using lender's mortgage insurance or saving the bigger deposit. The other thing you've got to consider is if you are going to save a 20% deposit, and if we're talking $500,000 house, it's 100 grand. Okay, so you know, 5% is 25 grand, 20%, 100 grand, that means you've got to save $75,000. So it's probably gonna take you a number of years to do that. And what you've got to consider is what's gonna to happen to the price of property over those numbers of years. So that's the way to think about it, guys. So guys, that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to run through with you for lenders in mortgage insurance today. Couple of things before I go. Uh, once again, we love to see your interaction with these posts, so please comment, question, like, love, angry. If you've got a question that you want me to discuss in more detail or you want me to answer as part of our Just Ask Tim video series, please make sure you put that question maybe in the comment box below or you can contact through us through any of our social media platforms, uh, either me personally, at TimGuestAU, or if you want to contact Infinite Wealth, at InfiniteWealthAU, you'll be able to get in contact with us through there. Now also don't forget, please share these videos with your friends and family so they can get the, the benefit of this valuable information as well. And of course also stay tuned for uh, Friday this week when I, uh, or Thursday actually, when it, uh, the, the week in real estate, uh, where you can get all the top stories happening from the week in real estate, finance and investment so you can stay ahead of the pack. Okay guys, that's it from me. Have a great week, enjoy the sunshine that's out there today and I look forward to speaking to you later in the week. See you guys.